The ideal gas model and kinetic molecular theory provided 19th century chemists and physicists with a highly intuitive and mathematically friendly model for the behavior of gases. However, if we try to bring this model into the real world, we very quickly encounter some pretty serious problems, particularly related to tenant number two, which assumes that the gas particles take up zero volume. This cannot possibly be true in reality, right? Gas particles do take up volume, regardless of the identity of the gas, and how much volume they take up depends on what the molecules are made of. So we can't just assume that molecules have negligible volume if we want to bring this model into the real world. Tenet 4 is also problematic. Gas particles do exert attractive or repulsive forces on one another when they come into close contact. These are simply intermolecular forces, and you will talk about them in great detail in your introductory chemistry course in solids and liquids. We can assume that gas particles have no intermolecular forces, but this assumption breaks down, particularly at high pressure and high concentration when the gas particles are forced into close contact with one another. It's also silly, on some level, to assume that gas collisions are elastic, since gas particles can internalize some of that collision energy through, for example, electronic excitations and vibrations inside the molecule and other ways to store the kinetic energy of collisions. So the kinetic molecular theory breaks down when we look at real gases to a greater or lesser extent. It has withstood the test of time because many, many gases under a wide variety of typical conditions do behave in a close to ideal manner. But the ideal gas model doesn't work for everything, and that's the subject of this video. We're turning our attention to real gases. Where I want to start is with a single number that can give us a measure of the ideality of a particular sample of gas. It's known as the compressibility factor. And this is, in fact, what's calculated in this simulation right here, the PV divided by NKT line. PV divided by NKT for this submicroscopic sample, or PV divided by NRT for a macroscopic sample, should be equal to 1 for a single mole of gas. For an ideal gas, this value is equal to 1. It's given the letter Z. So for a single mole of gas, PV divided by RT should be equal to 1. Another way to think about the compressibility factor is as a ratio of the actual molar volume of our sample of interest divided by the molar volume of an ideal gas. The volume taken up by a mole of the actual gas divided by the volume taken up by a mole of a hypothetical ideal gas under the same conditions. Of course, these will match for a gas that is perfectly ideal. When the value of Z is greater than 1, we can think of the gas particles as repulsive. The pressure times the volume is greater than would be expected based on the ideal gas model, or in terms of the molar volumes, the molar volume of the actual gas is greater than would be expected based on the ideal gas model. It's taking up more space than the ideal gas model would predict because of repulsions between the gas particles. That is what's seen in this simulation, and the essential reason why is that each of these circles is actually taking up some space. So there are massive repulsions, essentially infinite repulsions, inside the circles, right? The gas particles cannot get closer to one another than the diameter of these circles, essentially. And so there are repulsive forces. This increases the molar volume and causes PV divided by NKT to be slightly greater than 1 in this simulation. We could get this closer and closer to 1 if we shrunk those particles down to smaller and smaller size. When Z is less than 1, we can think of the gas as attractive. The particles are not taking up as much volume as would be expected based on the ideal gas model. And this is because the particles are pulling themselves toward one another through attractive interactions, attractive intermolecular forces. A typical plot of compressibility factor as a function of pressure is shown for you right here for a number of different gases. So we can see that, first of all, at low pressure, at very low pressure, highlighted in purple here on the axis, we approach ideality with the theoretical limit of P equals to zero corresponding to an ideal gas. This is an infinitely dilute, essentially one particle is how you can think about that. And in those situations, interparticle forces are extremely weak since the gas is extremely dilute and collisions are rare. 
When we get into moderate pressure territory, the interparticle attractions are starting to decrease that molar volume. We start getting some intermolecular forces building in, and this causes Z to decrease. And this tends to be more pronounced for more polar gases. Things like CO2, which contains some polar bonds, we see a large dip in Z, indicating attractive intermolecular forces at moderate pressures. At some point, at high pressure and high concentration, the gas particles get so close to one another that they start to repel. Their electron clouds start to repel one another. And these interparticle repulsions increase the molar volume and push Z above 1. So this shows you the pressure dependence of the compressibility factor. There's also a temperature dependence, which is not shown on the slide, but I'll just talk through. At higher temperature, gases tend to behave more ideally, and the reason for this is that the kinetic energy of the gas particles becomes so large in relation to the potential energy that the potential energy essentially becomes negligible. So the strengths of intermolecular forces are essentially overcome by the large kinetic energy of the gas particles. In that situation, gases tend to behave more ideally. This slide just shows a picture of, this slide just shows what happens at moderate pressures when Z dips below 1, when Z gets lower than the ideal gas, ideal value. So the decrease in molar volume we understand as being derived from these attractions between the gas particles, compressing things down, sort of pulling things in. And we also observe a lower pressure in real gases than would be expected based on the ideal gas model because of those attractive forces. Particles that are approaching the wall are pulled on from behind by the gas particles behind them that are engaging in attractive interparticle forces. And so they're moving more slowly when they hit the wall, and this results in a decreased pressure. 